going, we're going, we're going, we're, we're going live. somewhere. We are live. Happy Thursday. Happy May. What? What, what is today? May what? May, May 6th. 6th. May 6th. It's not the May 5th. It's not May 4th. It's May 6th. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be May. Of, revenge of the, of the 6th. 6th. Sith. Oh, yeah. Sith. Okay. Yeah. So, Sith. Revenge of the Sixth. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually like Revenge of the Sixth the better than Revenge of the Fifth. I, you know, the Fifth is, is more of a party time kind of thing. You know what I mean? You know, I mean, like, I kind of just want Cinco de Mayo to be its own thing. And then you can bookend it with May the Fourth be with you and Revenge of the Sixth. And then also, depending on how much you imbibed for Cinco de Mayo, then Revenge actually, of the Sixth. Yeah. Yeah, that may be. Sense, that's exactly so. waking up on the sixth and then, uh, you know, <laughs> dealing with all of the <laughs> Cinco de Mayo stuff. Dude, I hope I hope everybody's doing great. Um, actually, speaking of which, I, I do need to tweet this out. I didn't I realize I probably did not. I, I completely spaced. So we're just going to make this a part of the show uh, where we also tweet about our podcast on our podcast. During our podcast, and, uh, if we don't do it that way, it's it's not a fun podcast. Let me just jumping in with at TK. <laughs> I just got your text. Uh, see, that's that's what happens. Well, I'm just glad I'm, I'm glad you got some food. So, well, uh, yeah, so yes, yeah, so a little bit of background, as you guys probably know, the reason one of the reasons why the show is a little bit early last few weeks is because of Ramadan and obviously, you know, late staying up late and so on. Um, but one of the things that happened, which I didn't realize when we were setting up the time, is that it kind of bumps close to when I eat. So uh, tonight, so, uh, breaking fast was at 7.43. So I barely had about 17 minutes or so to eat, get ready, and you know, get on the show and all of that. So um, I, I was a little bit of a rush. <laughs> so Juan was texting me. He's like, hey, we're still good? Are we going on? <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, we doing this? Uh... No, no, dude. We're, we're just we're totally just going to just chill. We're just going to chill. <laughs> no, I mean, I kind of feel like we need this this week, though, is is like we're, we've got some gaming phones to talk about. Good, um, good phones. I'm glad that you got a chance to play with uh, the Black Shark to, uh, 4. And and like finally direct, you know, like I'm not yeah, just yeah. like stealing a Black Shark from a friend. Which we <laughs> helped me out with last time. I um, hey, man, this year yeah. is your turn. I didn't get anything from them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, let's be fair. It's I not like, like it. Xiaomi hasn't sent you too many phones. I, um, <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that because <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. I can neither confirm or deny the fact that there may be more things coming. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a teaser. <laughs> it is very much a teaser. I can't say some of these things. Uh, no, uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's no secret. I guess. I mean, I'm definitely very thankful that Xiaomi's has been. I mean, I've, I've had an opportunity to see the, the the gamut of their Mi 11 line. I mean, with the exception, obviously, of the Pro or the 11X, uh, the the one the the um, India specific models that I don't think they send out internationally. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, the Mi 11i was a very nice uh, surprise for uh, actually. It it felt like at the time when I when I saw it on paper, I didn't realize you know where where does it make sense? Does it really make sense since the 11 was there? You had the light there. I felt like the light was the light, and I went. No, the I actually had a. It's, it was like the T of, <laughs> of one pluses. Like... <laughs> it, it's it's right under the eleven. Um, well, for what a more I was kinda, friendly fry. Yeah, I mean, we're we're going to be talking about not not just Black Shark and Xiaomi. We're going to be talking about gaming phones. I just absolutely. Them. We're going to be talking about gaming phones. One of the things that I was kind of interested in in checking out the the Black Shark is my first experience with uh, the Snapdragon eight seventy. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. definitely, uh, I have one of the uh, Pocos that I was running at that. And I was just going to say, I mean, it's, it's what is it? The F three? That's the closest. Uh, was it the F three or the X three? No, the X three had the eight sixty, and the F three was the eight seventy. So I right. think the F three is almost exactly the same phone as the Black Shark minus the cool. super fast charging. And oh, that's true. Shoulder triggers. But and and I think also the cooling, well, uh, spec wise, well, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I was say they're, they're they're doing a little bit more for the thermal hardware in there. But I'd be curious to see if that's much different because my uh, my experiences gaming were a little were a little mixed on the Black Shark. I so. I'm I'll be very honest. I saw the video posting. I didn't get a chance to catch the video yet because I think you posted it um, the, during the day to, uh, today. So I was a little yeah. bit. We were going back like and forth with homework and stuff. Yeah. Hey man, I I posted my video of the of the GTH like maybe an hour or so before you. 
It was it was a weird morning. It was a weird morning. I woke up, uh, you know, whole bunch of things coming up. I had a lot of, believe it or not, training, uh, yearly training for my for for day stuff, and uh, that took my time. And then with Omar and some homework and stuff like that to finish up this stuff because you know homeschooling, not homeschooling, but uh, distance yeah. learning still. Yeah, uh, we got a we got an email or a letter uh, saying um, next year they're not going to be offering uh, distance learning since everybody supposedly wants to go back. So we'll uh, we'll have to see how the next school year goes up. It'll be interesting. Maybe yeah, um, I think we're going to be in a very similar boat. So we'll uh, we'll we'll have to see how Lex handles this. But I know from her perspective, it's she's she's on board. She she doesn't like school being little windows on a laptop so I, I i i totally agree and i understand and i think for to a certain point omar deals with it and he's he's you know settling with it um the fact that we're able to go back to swimming normal kind of uh and and karate normal has been a little bit helpful he gets to hang out with kids he has to see his friends i mean he's 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 so excited for it that he's doing karate and swimming back to back like literally two hours worth of exercise that I'm like, that's just too much for me. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, it's good. Ah, he's young. He needs it. He, just, he has just, the, he has the energy, right? <laughs> just run him, you know, just burn that energy off. Bur burn, bur burn that energy. So he can basically just, you know, go to sleep. Very, very nice. Uh, I see Dave Burns in the chat. Gary's, uh, as usual, of course, Gary the fireman. <laughs> we got Vazikos, we got Ranish. Um, so I, you know, I, I wanted to jump in um, kind of like how we we've been sort of closing um, some of our conversations. I, what games are you playing on your fancy gaming phones? What, I, uh, what's, what, uh, what's on what's on the docket right now? I'm not, I, I'm, I'm very I'm hitting Call of Duty hard, man. I actually and, and weird enough, I'm getting back into uh, Fortnite. I, I don't know why. I'm, I'm actually, I, I, I I'm reverting. Like I'm reverting. I'm not is, going forward. <laughs> I, I kind of feel like Fortnite is one of those is one of those games that sh should be revisited, but then I don't see how it's a sustainable game. You know what I mean? Like it's not the game that you play all day, every day. No, it's like no, it's you come it's back to it burst. a couple seasons yeah. later. You you burn out on it again, and then you let it sit for a while, and then you decide when you want to go back to it. So so that makes like total sense. Well, it's like the me. thing for me, it's it's like a two two level spectrum, right? Because Fortnite's approach to game to for, uh, FPS games is very different than Call of Duty, and and there's Call of Duty, you know, modern, modern warfare, and then there is Call of Duty Black Ops. So there's different levels, but um, I I have to I I mean credit has to be given when credit is really due, and um, they did a really decent job on the on the new map with Call of Duty that it, it feels. Mm -hmm. Although it's the exact same area, they didn't really change the area, but it changed it in time in a way. So we're back to 1983 and before the explosion and so on. So they have a few new maps, a few new modes to play with, um, but it feels fresh. It feels playable. And there's some new you know, gears in there. It's still t the type of game that basically, you know, I, I hate to say it, but it's more like a pay to play kind of thing because Warzone yeah. is free. But you're buying, you know, like the season pass, and if mm -hmm. you want to buy some, you know, decent guys, you don't have to. Realistically, you don't. Uh, you're able to basically I'm, jump I'm in. I'm kind of tired find. of that argument, though. I mean, at some yeah. point, it's like, yeah, you, you're buying stuff. Oh, and, well, and, no, absolutely. And, and, don't get me wrong. If, it is. Yeah. If it's if it's kind of uh, what's the word? I'm mean, if if it's kind of leveling, if it's kind of commensurate with the amount of enjoyment I'm getting out of the game, then I think that's fine. Yes. Is that I'm I'm really tired of the way that we kind of crouch microtransactions and in-app purchases and this language of free to play or pay to win or you know like if, if it were just a bit more upfront and it were easier mm -hmm. to kind of just like you know this is a game that's a game as a as a subscription or a game as a service or this is what you're going to pay you can you can play it for free with these kinds of expectations but that's not really the terminology that we use and i just think it's kind of funny that we we try to like cloak. <laughs> well, so I'll I'll say this: the the microtransactions are obviously very clear. Uh, I think the game is very much weighted towards specialty oh, guns oh, that no, are no. obviously I mean, going like, to be. I, I think yeah, some games, games can be totally fair. I just mean the general language surrounding gaming. Has oh, oh yeah, no no morphed into this like 1984 double speak of well, it's free <laughs> to play. It's you don't to play. have to buy anything, and you're like, okay, at some point that's that's BS. At some point, uh, that's not true. 
by... the, the game the game won't prog- i mean you obviously won't be able to level up to a certain point and doing and the way you the game c- goes the one thing i do have to say that i did appreciate about, about them is if you do let's say go in with the season pass so there's the the, the game pass and so on um st- certain steps in the game pass give you certain cre- basically uh, store credits for for the lack of a better word and in a season pass if you finish it during that season you would get enough coins to buy the next season for free and mm-hmm. they've been doing that for the last three seasons that I've been on. So in a way, I haven't had to buy the uh, the, the season yeah. pass multiple times. It's the uh, it's an incentive for me to finish the pass as opposed to just let it ride. And as long as I finish it before it resets, I have enough coins to be able to jump into the season next season pass, right. which is about a thousand. So it, I, I like the approach they had it there. Um, I'll, I won't deny the fact that obviously, I mean, if you don't want to buy anything, you can. Uh, you're just basically at the mercy of whatever you end up landing, whatever loot boxes you end up hitting uh, as you're going in uh, on the maps to, to find guns. If you're playing uh, Plunder, then that's that makes sense. But if you're just playing Warzone, Warzone, like actual, like, yeah. uh, you know, uh, just then you don't even get a gun that you want. You just land and pick up whatever you want. So uh, we've, we've uh, got this is a I like this from David Burns. It's free. It, it, it's fee to pay. <laughs> oh we got hey. lfa ch gadget hey. and Armad- armadillo tech from texas i want to say it's um, armadillo yeah it's probably armadillo but yeah. i think i think it's armadillo, L- buddy. It's armadillo. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly lfa man jeff how you doing um so it's, it's been I, an interesting week right I, I mean just overall yeah you know busy but not really busy kind of thing if, if it makes lot, perfect lot, i mean for me it's it's like lots of of back-end work I mean, mm-hmm. I kind of feel like I've been spinning my wheels just because it's taken me so long to get videos out and to get projects finished. But um, yeah, like it, it's like I haven't stopped working. So, I, it never it never it ever ends. It's really more of a uh, kind of like a cycle in a way. Um, oh, I see Adam is in the chat as well. And hey, oh, Tech hey, Love and Mama's in the chat. Mama. Hey. hey, welcome. Uh, welcome. Um, it, so, I mean, I also want to hear like if anyone's in the chat, you know, what games you're currently. Oh, yeah. Playing. Know. please and, uh, uh change the conversation away from call of duty <laughs> so i don't think matt's <laughs> going to be in this <laughs> um because like i i've still been the, the 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 addictive factor of dead cells is making it very difficult to peel me away from playing dead cells because i'm on like my second boss cell i'm <laughs> i'm like i've got a couple different outfits i got the piccolo outfit so i've got that as the upgrade and it's just so easy to like pick up for a couple minutes mm-hmm and I swear it's got some of the best like save state cloud save mm-hmm. I've I've ever seen because I'm constantly back and bouncing back and forth between different phones. Yep. So like I'll be playing it on an LG velvet so that I can like keep a YouTube stream going at the same time <laughs> same as time. I'm playing. And then I'll put that down and pick up a one plus nine. And as long as I've like properly quit the game, it is the exact place, the exact moment. I mean, I haven't so had any other syncs game. to their servers, or does it sync up to Google Play services? I think it syncs uh, up to Google Play, but whatever so they're the doing games, yeah. to to save it, because like, um, what was the? I stopped playing Anima. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that kind of Path of Exile Diablo clone. Yeah. Um, their most recent update broke like everything. It even killed my. Uh, you you know, like in Path of Exile, you pay mm-hmm. to get extra stash slots. Yeah. So you can have more inventory and I paid for those. And then they're like, Nope, you've got to buy them again. And you're like, well, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. There's no, so there's no I, restore for purchase at all. And uh, maybe the at play all. store and, and the, the developers okay. are completely unresponsive. But the worst part was, is like you would play on a while for one phone. You'd exit the game completely mm-hmm. like nuke the app. And then you'd pick up another phone and it would be like your save state from a week ago. And you're like, this is, this is terrible. Uh, yeah, Whatever no. you're doing to, to sync this up is awful. And so like Dead Cells, it's just so refreshing. It's like the exact brick. It works. You know what I mean? It's like it works <laughs> perfectly. Um, but then I, I was sold on, uh, you sold me on, on save. That's exactly right. You saved so, me um, save. But the other one, uh, th- this actually happened a couple of weeks back, but I finally got around because I stopped playing Anima. I need some kind of dungeon crawling looter kind of game mm-hmm. in my life. Titan Quest okay. just released a massive patch for Android with controller support. Nice. Okay. It so, is so good. It, it's so, definitely. So how, how, well, I'm assuming you've already started playing it or. Oh 
yeah. No, so I, yeah. I've been playing Titan Quest like off and on in short little <laughs> batches, but Anima just burned me. So I was like, yeah, I, I'm going to go back to Titan Quest. Oh my God, they've got controller support. Let me update this. It was like a, a 1.2 gigabyte, gigabyte update. Yeah. Um, and again, with my little Steel Series controller, Bluetooth controller, and it's propped up in that little phone cradle, it is so, so nice. Mm -hmm. Like playing a dungeon crawler with a controller. I mean, it's like, why, why haven't we had this before? Like it, you know, mouse and keyboard kinds of control interfaces for things, for games like Diablo, you know, like Diablo started, you know, this all off. Mouse and keyboard on PC. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to play Torchlight on my living room TV, but Torchlight doesn't support controllers. And I'd have to jump through a bunch of hoops to like map a controller yeah, to get it to work to, like it's yeah. it's dumb like i'm not going to do that and now here comes titan quest and you're like this works great we should have been doing this like all I, along. I think any any game that requires um you know the crawl method situation on any kind of uh, screen should support controller there's no reason why it doesn't uh and i think especially if they're as long as they're running a reason you know a recent os they're not running something like from you know nine or even earlier um, I think we see also some some other options in here. Uh, oh, so GH Gadgets playing Genshin Impact. Um, Genshin. Yeah, uh, it, it's a very popular game. Um, League of Legends, <clears throat> Wild Rift from Adam. He's playing that one as well. Um, and I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, where was it? Oh, okay. Uh, isn't there a new Diablo coming in the, uh, to mobile? Wasn't there yeah. uh, a new Diablo yeah. Immortal? So yeah. the the I, I've I've gotten to see a part of the alpha. Mm -hmm. um but i haven't gotten to play it i've been hearing good things that it's it's a i i forget who's doing it's a chinese developer that's mm -hmm. doing all of like the back end work and then it's set in the diablo ecosystem but um I, I, i'm just i'm just anxious to see how how the game is kind of monetized I, yeah. what i desperately want on mobile is diablo 2. yeah I don't even care if it's Diablo 2 remastered. In, in fact, I'd prefer it not be. I just want old Diablo 2. The, the classic, on, the original. Yeah, on my phone. I, that's that's really what would make me happy. Um, especially with the 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 pixel style art being a little more gothic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's darker. It's it's a little Dark. eviler than Diablo 3 was. Back um, uh, one of the reasons why I jumped into it is during that. Oh, I'm going to say the gothic phase. <laughs> But yeah, I'm with you. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Oh, it, like I know a lot of people would talk. You know, when we were younger, a lot of people would talk about like WoW addiction. For me, it was yeah. Diablo addiction. Um, I would I would sacrifice sleep and grades and hygiene <laughs> to keep playing <laughs> Diablo too. I like um, that. Oh, so man. the old was, the olden days, yeah, Diablo too. Uh, oh, yeah, so I want sure. that. I, I mean, I don't want that part of my life back, but I want Diablo too uh, back in my life. But Titan Quest is proving to be. Um, a reasonable facsimile, and uh, I I, sh I should start venturing a little bit out uh, more. Uh, but it's 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 the weird part about it with um, so th the reason why I started playing Fortnite again it was mostly because I want to start playing against Omar. So he he's very much into Fortnite and Minecraft and those type oh, of yeah. games. And I felt like when I went to Call of Duty, I I kind of graduated from uh, <laughs> I want to say elementary or junior high. It's it's <laughs> the gaming the mechanics of Fortnite are, are very don't get me wrong there there's still a lot of skill. To Fortnite, oh, uh, for and sure. it has a very, very unique mechanics that doesn't exist but, but in any a, other game. It's a play style that feels. It I, just feels like it just feels like you're taking it a way step back. Like you go from Call of Duty from being able to snipe and actually have you know be able to pick gun. You know your 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 equipment is actually so much more advanced and customized mm -hmm. as opposed to the you find what you find concept uh, approach. And um, you know, the best way to hide yourself is to build up a, a, a fort like. So I played a few. I've been playing, uh, trying to get back into it because I stopped playing, and mm -hmm. I've been, I'm playing it also on PC, which is a little bit different. Yeah. I originally got into Fortnite on mobile, and playing it on PC at, at the 240 hertz with the wider view is just so much better. Um, are, so are you short answer. Turning on all the ray tracing and oh, dude, ray tracing DLSS, everything. I'm whatever <laughs> Nvidia. The reason why I wanted to get back into it is uh, so ray tracing and DLSS was turned on for uh, Black Ops <laughs> on Call of Duty. So I've been enjoying it there, and you could feel the difference. Like you play Warzone sure. and you play like the or the Warzone gameplay. And then you play uh, Black Ops, and you're like, it's a different game. Like this makes no sense. The same character that shows up in both, it looks. I don't want to say like like it was made in the early twenty uh, like you know two thousands kind of graphics to yeah. twenty twenty one graphics at you know buttery smooth 
crystal, like you could see the sweat fall off the guy's forehead. Um, so the experience is very different for me and I'm enjoying it. So I want to like, wait a minute, I haven't played Fortnite on the PC before. Let me see what I can do. I turned it on, turned on all the features and you know, seriously, it actually is very nice. Mm -hmm. Um, way more enjoyable than, than, than on the, on the, well, I guess on the ROG phone too. Uh, but I felt like, again, it's one of those experiences that you gotta have to try. So once I was able to get my system back up and running, uh, after through, there's still a few hiccups every once in a while, I guess I, I didn't really fully uh, surpass the issues of going from an X470 to an X570. Um, even though it's the same manufacturer, I think there's driver issues or something. Uh, mm -hmm. So every once in a while, I get a little bit of a hiccup. So I don't, I'm hoping that that's the problem. I'm hoping it's not like a damaged CPU or something that's you oh, know, crashing really? at some point. Um, but uh, I do actually have one thing I did want to ask, and I'll ask in a second. Uh, so oh, overall, uh, Dave, David is going to bed because he's oh, tired. So dude, everyone, everyone say good night to David. And good night, buenas tardes, good evening, this and good night, and, and well, yeah, oh, and uh, bonsoir, and, and and sweet dreams, and yes, enjoy. And on that note, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, <laughs> right. It was a great was, chat. David watching, there's really no point. So, so uh, the question I wanted to ask, and 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 please, everybody in the chat, please let me know because I I realize that I should know well, better, but there's the I mean, like real real, real quick. Uh, yeah. NetEase, Gabaletta is saying NetEase is the company that's probably working on Diablo Immortal, ah. um, and that also um, Electric Bulu <laughs> An Anima <laughs> broke a lot of the classes with the new patch. The the, the Anima update is garbage and this is a game that i loved i oh. loved grinding uh anima and it's awful but tech odyssey is also talking the re2 remake uh, mm -hmm. uh david was was backing me up torchlight needs an overhaul for couch co-op so i would love it, it's exactly the kind of fantasy world that um because marie isn't super into adventure games or mm -hmm. you know like we try, I, I tried to get her to play like a Drake's Uncharted. It's not her jam at all. But I bet if we were just sitting side by side on our big, you know, 4K TV, couch. Yeah, yeah. two controllers in hand, just kind of running through the world of Torchlight. I, I mean, like, I think she'd dig it. It's it's kind of the right, you know, her little dog, you know, like the, the little sidekick animal characters that they introduced so that they could scurry, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, resources back to the village. I mean, like, I think she'd, she'd dig on that. Um, and I think it'll uh, be more fun because you guys will be doing it together. No, but I just mean like it, Tor Torchlight's never going to give me controller support <laughs> on, on Torchlight 2 or, or even Torchlight 3. Um, Jeff is saying that he's playing Asphalt 9. Asphalt uh, 9 is pretty decent. Yeah. And Boom Beach. Asphalt mm -hmm. 9 is still solid. I just, th there's something about that shift in, in like racing games mm -hmm. um, where it's not really that bad it's not like a grindy mechanic that that forces you to pay into it but there's just yeah. something like a like a berry so like uh, for a racing game as as kind of as far as i'll go is kind of something like a riptide like a riptide really like riptide renegade it's a classic they've had a few remakes of riptide too I, I i find and i think at one point it wasn't it free i, was, I think it was available for free on the on the play store like a, a, one well, of the on versions now. yeah it was yeah. on sale a bunch of times riptide 2 i think was one of their holiday games Okay. Two years I played ago? Riptide GT also. Yeah. And and Riptide Two is is I mean uh, out of all the Riptides, Riptide Two is still my favorite. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just like just something about how, what we now do with modern racing games. It's like you need fuel, and there's not really a timer clock or energy, but there's like a mechanic that forces you to resource man. I mean, just like I I want to get in a car, or I want to get on a jet ski, or I want to like. It's just on a bicycle. I don't care what the vehicle is. Give me a pod racer. I, I miss like the kind of the older structure of, but I, of racing games. That's the appeal of, of uh, like I've, I've been playing real racing too. Also um, mm. just mostly because you want to be able to hit the higher refresh rate. So like to, to really yeah. push the uh, red magic six to get the 165 Hertz. Cause that's again, very few games can mm -hmm. support it. Real racing two does go all the way. Although in my opinion, it's kind of like, like we don't have enough detail. There's not enough world for me to kind of enjoy the fact. Right. I mean, you get the fast paced, you get the, we get the refresh rate and I, I get to see obviously that it's showing me that it's 165. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like it's, it's like, I, I don't feel like I'm accomplished. Like I want my games like call of duty on mobile, solid 90 frames per you second. You feel like you're that doing me, something. Too. Yeah. I, I want to be able to enjoy it. Going from 60 to 90 is a big jump. Okay. Although it's not a hundred percent, it's like 50% jump. It's the most noticeable. 
to play a game at 120 frames per second, I feel like would be the best situation for me. 144, icing on the cake. 165 at this point, I think I feel like it's more bragging. It's like, okay, I can reach 165 <laughs> kind of. But I don't think it's noticeable. Between 144, that 120 to 165, it's a... Ah, it's it's almost like uh, it, it's nice to have, but I feel like I think 120 is that solid performer. Mm -hmm. And the Red Magic 6 does a great job on it. Uh, you know, at 120 or even 144. Uh, I think it was a um, Dead Trigger 2 plays at 144. Uh, played at 165 for a little bit. I, I don't know how, but then at some so, point it kind of jumped back. I was so frustrated because, uh, you know, Dead Trigger 2 has been listed as support for 120 and higher. And I yep. went to fire it up on the Black Shark and it is capped hard at 60 it's so, just like brick it's, so, wall cap yeah it, it's, it's that because, white listing ah man so yeah you know in in kind of shifting gears because you know we've actually been talking about all, all of the individual games I, it, mm -hmm. the the frustrating thing for android still is not having a good resource i mean try and look it up mm -hmm. D do a google search for what Android games support higher refresh rates? And you're going to get articles from the first Razer phones list. Surprisingly, to... that's that's my go-to list. Yeah. But I mean, like, you know, you also get, oh, well, on the Red Magic list. And you're like, you'll look through that and you're like, okay, I see a couple games on here. Let me try mm -hmm. this on any other phone that has a high refresh rate display. And it doesn't work at all. It's, it's a, like it's this, a, this individual like licensing stuff is. It is. It, um, and with the Red Magic, surprisingly, so it, when I first got, got the phone, they were having some problems with the software. So I wasn't really even able to play with it. They fixed the software issue, and, and that's what gave me the ability of jumping to 165. And um, but they also sent me a list of games that were primarily like I felt like. You know, like Angry Birds playing at 165 frames per second or 144. <laughs> I don't really see the point of it. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, it's nice, but it, the you know, game there, runs. There's, at, uh, there's enough movement in Angry Birds that uh, actually, I mean, I bet you Angry Birds at 90 frames per second looks sharp. Oh, I, don't get me wrong. I think the that, sharpness is it's absolutely. Yeah. But anything beyond like at 165 frames per second for me, I'm expecting. So the thing, okay. A game sounds that like a waste battery. Better, it, it it's absolutely pushing the limit of, of a game that doesn't really need it. Um, but they also had a version, I think it was like a Chinese version of PUBG, which is a, like a China version of it that does run at a much higher, which I really wanted to test. But the game is in Chinese and I don't really understand that or, you know, to be able to go through the menus and so on. Right. Uh, plus nothing transfers. It's not the same servers and so on. So when you're testing out game gaming phones, especially brand new ones that are just coming out to the market. So I'm assuming the one you have is the global edition, right? Not the Chinese yeah. model. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, th that's the, con that's the main thing that we always get. So, and with Xiaomi, yes, definitely. So by the way, when I saw the picture that you had in there, I, re I honestly, I forgot that you had the red, uh, the, uh, the black shark. I thought you had the honor of uh, view 20. Doesn't Do it look, that's what I said in my video. This is the love child of an LG V60 and an Honor V20. I saw that because v I had the X, remember? Glass. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I didn't even see the video. See, this is this is where we are. We're on that level right there. Wave <laughs> So when I when I saw that picture, I was like, wow, wow, you're pulling really back. That, that that's like 29, not even 2019, 28. No. It does. I think that I was mean, 2019. Like, yeah. Looking at this thing, it it really did like I I, I, somewhere buried in that pile of phones. I'm pretty sure I still have my view 20 and you're like, and, and you, so I'm assuming you have the blue one as well. Right. Cause I think I had the blue one. They let me borrow the red one for a while and I had to send that one back. I, I, they, so they didn't let, they didn't give me the blue one. They gave me the red one. Oh, and that's, that's the one I'm rocking. And so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. That, that, like almost Knight Rider, like V cut. So my mine, mine when I when I did the video, everybody kept saying, "It's like, isn't that the Chevron blue?" I'm like, yeah, Chevron. Didn't, no, it's not sponsored by Chevron. No, it's, it's definitely. <laughs> it looks it really so. Look, the, the gaming phones have a, the big thing. Is obviously, the first thing that jumps at you is gaming phones are trying to give you a PC experience on a phone, right? They're trying to give you that 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 RGB, that cool futuristic Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven look on a smartphone, and and I think I feel like. To a certain point, we expect it, and that's how you know it's a gaming phone. Almost like if it looked like a regular phone and it was said gaming phone on it, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, Black Shark, I think last year's phone was like super, like um, I don't want to say Ars uh, Technica kind of thing, just like really, oh man, it just felt like a very machine cut, like the different yeah, grooves and so I, on. I kind of I want to call it Mountain Dew fueled. 
where it's got it like did, those that green and those protrusions. Yeah, they really like the green color, green and the green and black kind of going on. I was like, yeah, so Mountain Dew to a sponsor. I kind of like, and especially because because I think um, like Asus also toned down ROG a little bit. It's they obviously did. not a regular phone, but it's not as not, not our, yeah it's not an rg phone too i feel like the two and the three yes. screamed with that side heat pipe kind of construction that they, exactly this is a gaming phone you so, game what, yeah. what i really like about the black shark is yeah. it feels like any other xiaomi it's got okay. the amazing power button fingerprint sensor i mean yep. this thing just works so well um but then as it should. Yep. You you wouldn't really notice that anything were much different about this phone until you get to the little switches and you pop open the, so, the triggers. So here's the thing. That feature last year was reserved purely to the Black Shark 3 Pro, which exactly. we didn't have. And I, I was very happy to see that they brought it down to the 4 because the mm -hmm. standard 4 should not... I mean, there was no reason why you didn't have it. I mean, realistically, the, the body of both the 4 and the 4 Pro, or even back last year, the 3 and the 3 Pro, were very similar. You know, mm -hmm. the only difference, obviously, is they in included the triggers because, uh, I mean, obviously, ROG and Red Magic all have those triggers. I think gaming phones need to have additional triggers just for the yeah. sake of control, um, aesthetics. But, but that's what I that's what I like. And and I'm hoping that the next Red Magic follows mm -hmm. this trend where I don't I don't really want the phone to to scream different. I just want it to have some they some did, ability to map shoulder triggers. Yeah. And then yeah. just leave it alone. And and the rest of the phone can just be a regular phone. I mean, realistically, they did change the the design a lot from last year. So what they it's, did is it's cleaner. It's definitely it's cleaner, definitely cleaner, I, and I, not no edges. It's it's actually clean. It's very smooth all across. But, but, so but it's it, a single piece. It still kind of looks like it belongs in the world of like Hunkai Impact Third. You know, like, <laughs> or, or or it's on uh, or it's on uh, the new, Cap the the new uh, Captain America. Lines. Yeah, no, exactly. Like, right there, right. You know, he just pulled I, it I off. Needed, I, I needed seams and piecing that are not functional. And I kind of feel like you could you could get rid of that. I mean, it's it's funny because like they're trying to keep that shape in mm -hmm. the glass, but it's all just just glass. And this oh, looks absolutely. like it could be an honor. It doesn't look like it's some weird, <laughs> you know, like failed <laughs> transformer. No, no, no. You know, that, that design is iconic. I honestly, I loved it on the View 20. Uh, it's just that, like I said, it, it caught me. It's like, you know, like when you see a, a thumbnail, the first, you obviously, the, the thing that catches your eye, obviously, is the guy holding the big phone with the outline mm -hmm. and all of that. But then, it, and then you read the words. Uh, but when I saw it, I was like, wait a minute, hold on. Why is that is a, okay. And then, oh, that's the Black Shark 3, LA 4. I'm like, okay, huh. sorry, sorry. Well, right. I'll, I'll have to catch up. I will have to catch it on the replay uh, as, as I, as always, uh, but I didn't get a chance to, I, I was, so I posted the GTH that I keep wanting to call it the GHT, but it's GTH, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, mob boy, um, heavily inspired, uh, smartwatch, uh, fitness tracker. Very nice. Actually, it's, uh, very surprising. Um, there's a, one feature that really uh, drove me, uh, that made me, that sold me on this one, which is I remember like a couple of weeks ago when I wasn't feeling well, um, and I took the weekend off. I was actually, uh, that was roughly like day two or three of having that watch. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize I was running a fever. Like, you know, like when you're feeling like, you know, you were achy, you were not, you know, tired, whatever. But I didn't realize I was running a fever till the watch warned me that my temperature is over 101. Oh, that's cool. So this actually has continuous temperature and it, it's actually very accurate i was very surprised because my wife was like well hold on a second let me give you a thermometer and I, and the temperature came out the exact same so i was a glad that it alerted me that i was running a fever that was one thing so i knew just kind of take it easy don't try to keep pushing it because i decided to try to keep fasting during that day that was the wrong idea gotcha. um so i i so yeah uh it's there's a few features there you know blood oxygen level uh, uh I think a breathing measurement as well. It measures the how often you breathe and uh, and of course uh, heart rate monitoring and so on. So for seventy nine dollars, I really feel like it does a decent job for fitness tracking and health monitoring. It's not a smartwatch by any means uh, in sure. the way we think of you know the wrong one, the TickWatch uh, <laughs> Pro. I'm back. I'm finally back on something with Wear OS. Um, and I need to finish off the. Well, and you the get that OnePlus. new Gboard update. It's like the biggest news in Wear OS that we've had in years, according to tech blogs. <laughs> we finally have. 
Jeep. So let's just say this: um, <laughs> Wear OS on a Thick Watch Pro. Works, I feel like it's the only watch you should consider if you're getting a, a Wear OS watch right now. Right I now. haven't seen anything yeah. else that that really comes close to performance. Um, the uh, the update uh, is crazy good. It was good before the update. It's still mm -hmm. really good after the update. I don't feel like it was really a big difference. Yeah. And um, getting just getting back to normal. I'm going to call it normal adult notifications <laughs> it's like because the last couple of watches i've been working on remember i was i was on the amaze fit and then i jumped on from that one to the gth mm -hmm. so um notification i will say this much though on the gth from from my boy um much better than what i've seen with some of the other ones like the t-rex was good but i felt like that you couldn't tell like what app was sending you the notification this one shows it, it, the app it takes a little babysitting to get amaze fit to the point where it's really supporting individual apps for their notification. It got, it, it got better. It, uh, it definitely better. With, the, with the updates that we got. And that, yeah, I was going to say the most recent update on T-Rex helped a lot, but yeah. it's still not, I mean, truth be told, I don't think anything has touched Focals by North for oh. the interactions on the notification system in Android. I mean, that was yeah. just incredible what you could do with like a click on your little ringlet, then voice mm. commands and actions. And it just was so well implemented. And and really the closest to that, I think, is is tick watch. Yeah. Um, the the smart notification and uh, the smart replies. So so does because GTH is not running Android no, Wear. I mean, it's sorry, running Wear OS. Wear OS is uh, RTOS. Does it have support for replies or is it no, just a better no interaction? It's purely, yeah, it's purely a, a notification. And there was a couple of little bit of glitches and I'm hoping they get a chance to fix that in software updates. Uh, but I, uh, one time I was, I was uploading something to drive. Uh, and I don't think it was, I don't think it was the podcast. It was just something else that I was uploading for Omar. And it, when that notification was persistent on the smartphone, it was persistently buzzing on the watch itself the whole mm. time. Like I would dismiss it and it keeps coming back. So there was a little bit of a disconnect there, but I think overall the performance on it was actually pretty decent. I like mm -hmm. the the overall, like I said, the the UI element takes a lot of, um, I would say a lot of cues from TickWatch standard um, Wear OS yeah. design. Uh, the uh, watch faces are customizable. Uh, there is, you know, there's a nice selection. There's no third party apps, as you could imagine. It's very much, you know, a tailored down $79 or $80 experience. Uh, battery life, solid 10 days, which was crazy with the amount of notifications what, I was that's getting. What's, that's what's cracking me up is like, the 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 market is getting so compressed on where on fitness trackers yeah. like from from like a very very simple fitness band um sort of like samsung gear style to like okay. t-rex and 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 looking at like oneplus trying to crack that market too because you know the oneplus watch is kind of failing I, I think it'll get better, but it's currently it's kind of failing a little at trying to be an Amaze Fit style fitness mm -hmm. tracker. Um, you know, 80 bucks. And Can and we see? still look at like Fitbits in the 150 to 200 dollar range. And and I understand what they're trying to do, and they're trying to turn fitness tracking into more of a service mm -hmm. that you subscribe for. There, that but whole subscription model. Yep. I'm not I, I'm just not getting where. You know, like the core bread and butter experience of what a fitness tracker can provide is easily satisfied at under a hundred dollars as Absolutely. a one-time purchase out the door, you're done. And, and you don't even the, need the updates if it does the people, job right. Yeah, exactly. The community of people that are gonna benefit from that expanded subscription focus relationship with the manufacturer, I can't believe is a significant chunk of the of the fitness tracker audience like i feel that's got to be a niche audience very much very much it, exactly it, it's the the ultra on the spot they need to know exactly all the metrics as it's happening or even before it happens and they want to look at projection graphs and so on the, the reality is there is a, obviously the there is a base that will use it otherwise it wouldn't exist but yeah, uh, you know, I feel like the uh, actually even Josh is jumping in with that one as well. Yeah, the Mi Band, band. I was, I was just say, yeah, the, the Mi Band is a perfect example of that, what, especially what the Mi Band. Is it, it's it's sub fifty. Um, it's fifty bucks, like thirty nine ninety nine. I think when it came out. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, uh, weird enough, it it sells for less, but then most of the time when you find it on Amazon, it's usually increased by a little bit. But uh, yeah, okay. I mean, if you if you're able to pick it up straight from China or from a, an actual retail re, uh, an official account. But it's um, it's the same thing with Marie. I, I mean, yeah. she she was all about Fitbit, and then she uh, her her third uh, Fitbit charge 
broke mm -hmm. and and like she just needed something that and she she ganked the uh what is it the gt gtr 2e oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah you did that one earlier and she's never gonna go back to a fitbit <laughs> like she, don't, she don't me, she's looking what? at either a gth or what is it the the square amaze fit uh, uh the mini uh, the um I forget it's, the it's a gt something it's, it's not yeah GTR. it's gt2 uh, the the i think it's a gt2 e or it something yes yeah, something it, like that. it was an e yeah i remember i, I remember but, seeing that one as well yeah but but again like they're cheaper the battery lasts way longer <laughs> than her fitbit ever did and it, she's got the same sort of quality of data that's that's coming than from what she got on her fitbit so absolutely no no and so my voice when it comes down to apps though, this is where the support kind of comes in, right? So Fitbit, I feel like is is a, is a very well networked application. So their system app or their tracking application, believe it or not, like my wife used to have the Fitbit charge and although we no longer use the charge, she still uses the Fitbit app, which is weird. Uh, for the tracking, uh, other things that right. you know make sense and so on. Sorry, I'm, I'm not laughing at, at your wife, about your wife. I'm laughing because like- We got Issa and we got Josh and- Josh and Issa. <laughs> <laughs> apparently meeting They're up, up in our comments right now which is like the happiest homecoming uh, i like it hey how you doing hey, what's no. up, babe? uh <laughs> i love it i love it uh i got some cbd dude Ooh, okay so yeah I, don't you hit her tea that sounds interesting josh and his tea man gotta stop no, i gotta go I mean, over like, there. i gotta go over it, and get some of that tea i, I not that tea but tea in general about doing a cbd tea that's it, it, my, it my kinda, brain just kind of like tilted three degrees like actually yeah that, that makes sense that, that, that makes that, a lot of sense yeah you're like why did i not add x plus oh i know i'm no, 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 no. mad that i didn't think to consider that that would be a thing that exists so uh, no no I've, i'm 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 totally messing up on comments today uh even a dt <laughs> caught me on the whole adult, adult. <laughs> notification <Yes. laughs> i was gonna say I, something I, but i, I did not okay okay what i meant to say <laughs> on the record <laughs> is i meant to say is notifications we can respond to not that type of notification and and that notification style will not be discussed on this show it will be on a separate show for sure audio only show no uh <laughs> glad you explained <laughs> i saw his comment uh, well it's actually i saw gary commenting on his comment it's like it doesn't take much to take to, to get and a, and a few a few uh, folks in here talking about e-ink or digital ink oh and, yeah e and, yeah I'll always in my heart forever will be a the pebble. Pebble, pebble as, is um, I, I the, my only regret is I felt like I got on the pebble bandwagon way too late in the in the in the in the game of things because I got in on almost at the last model because of all the yeah. advancement they've done, especially with the uh, assistant, but uh, you know the ability of using your voice. Mm -hmm. So I felt like it was it was definitely a uh, it, it was an ecosystem that was so simple, so easy to go, to work. But had such a deep integration with Tasker, um, voice commands, you know, back and forth communication with your smartphone, and it was just I absolutely. I still think happy. Pebble has some of the best voice interactions that it, I've it was ever very. Used. It was so, like there was a few. Very, this is one of those few few devices or few accessories that I felt like should not have gone away. Somebody should have picked it up. Um, and the, the one I need to keep going. Yeah, I, I I need to see if it's still functional. I just found it in a box. Is my Qualcomm Talk? Do you oh. remember that? No. Hold on a second. I, I I mean I know of it. I don't remember what it looked like. Hold on. Now I got to look it up. QC. So I thought I'd lost it. It was just buried in a backpack that I hadn't used in forever. But it's the TOQ, the Qualcomm Talk, and it had a really funky um, sort of. I, I forget oh. what they they called the screen technology, but it was oh, a color screen. Technology, yeah, and the 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 wrist strap was hilariously implemented. It's fused oh into the body of the God, watch, that thing and is you had to adjust it by cutting the strap. So <laughs> yeah, as soon as you fit it to your wrist, you could never oh, give it to okay. anyone else. Okay, but I remember it. it now. I remember. Like yeah, four or five days of battery life, and it also had some of the best speech fit, to text. Use that, yeah, fit the tip that designed the heart. <laughs> It looks so much like a charge. Uh, <laughs> oh, big time. Only it's way bigger. 
<laughs> it's like comically large for all of the tech that they crammed into it. I, I, I there was I, a while. I need to see if it'll still charge. I don't even know if. Do you remember the Neptune? Do you remember the uh, the yeah. Neptune Pine? Um, so I got one. So there was a while where there was a lot of these trying to cram an Android phone on your wrist type of a smartwatch oh, experience. Yeah. So I know we're like deviating. Like everyone saw like, Samsung do like the gear, the first, yeah, yeah. like what was it, Gear S? The Gear S. Uh, the one that looks like a little mini phone that they curved. Because it does. It looks like a it mini looked, phone. I, it, it, they were going for that mini. Uh, I mean, and they had cameras back at the Remember, when they first started Android Wear, they were one of the only uh, smartwatches that had a built-in camera sitting right on the yeah. on the strap because that, that was a thing for video. Not that for video, for for pictures. Um, but no, Neptune, How Neptune Pine was a big. How could that have possibly been abused? No, absolutely <laughs> not. Walking around <laughs> with a, like, hold on, let me check the time. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you next week. Um it was one of those very interesting. I mean, there's still a lot of. I mean, I'm not gonna say the camera was great, but it was. It was definitely a very. Um, I felt like awful. it was in. It was. It was it an was awful approach. Putting a camera. But, on. What Neptune tried to do was a very weird situation, which was basically try to include video chat functions yeah. on your watch, because we all know we always want to do. You know, the Dick Tracy Dick concept Tracy. coming. Out. I think it's totally yeah. a Dick Tracy kind of thing, but uh, yeah, no, the talk. I remember the 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 Qualcomm talk. I never got a chance to play with one. Uh, but it, I remember it was rad, but it was completely <laughs> impractical. And it was just it looked massive. <laughs> I was like they have it, there's a picture here. It was so cool. Heaven. It just it I you, you you like something as simple as the watch strap should not have been as poorly conceived as the one as, the one time you set it up and you <laughs> you can't. And that's it. Anymore. So I mean, I was even like, hey, you know, I I was talking to my sister when I when I was really wearing it, and they're like. Hey, you could try and well, no, because if we fit the wrist strap to your wrist, we have to cut the band and then I'll never be able to wear it ever again. You know, I think that's something of a design flaw where mm -hmm. I can't let someone else test drive this watch or it's dead to me. There was there was a lot of um, the, the initial stages when we were starting with smartwatches. There was a lot of things going on as far as different designs, different, uh, you know, aesthetics. I feel like we're we are at a certain point now where that I feel. Um, it's the, the, there's the Tizen OS, there is the Wear OS, and then there is the fitness tracker experience mm -hmm. in a smartwatch look type of an experience. So those are, in my opinion, those are like the three camps that we're looking into. Um, there's some rumors that Samsung may switch over and start using Wear OS. So that may end up basically changing. I don't really see Samsung dropping all their R and D and years of developing all their gears and so on. Cause they switched over to, to Tizen from their gear. Uh, no, not the gear for the first uh, and it wasn't the first one. It was the second um, smartwatch that they released. I forgot the name of it, but they they released it with Android uh, back in the day. It was Android uh, not Wear OS, uh, but Android, Android Wear. Wear. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they switched it over with to Tizen with an update, which was crazy because the UI and everything stayed looking the same. It's just the back end changed to Tizen. So I, I feel like re the ability of responding to notification is nice but i can understand now why the battery life on some watches like these like you know the thick watch pro, uh, the three pro or even you know the uh, the samsung galaxy watch three so on the battery life isn't as long you can't go to 10 days and be able to do you know, you know auto replies um, especially with the assistants when you have the assistant that kind of takes I, a little I really bit of toll. don't think so i think the issues with compute power mm -hmm. are a challenge but I still think, especially from how far we made it on the Pebble, the mm -hmm. battery life that you could get on something like the Qualcomm Talk, you know, like some of these other experiments, I still think it's the screen. I, I still think it's this like all or nothing. Maybe we can mess with the frame rate to save a little power. But if it's bright enough to be seen in daylight under the sun, yep. you're nuking that the battery. Bad. Yeah. And 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 until we we kind of admit that that's really the big draw, it, like, for example, um, IBM just announced two nanometer chip fab. Right. Oh, wow. We're jumping down so, to two. Nice. Well, that's just it. IBM doesn't doesn't fab chips. They they do the R&D on mm -hmm. three generations ahead of oh, where okay. the computer market's going to go. Right. So, so they've got a five is roughly. Yeah. And they license, and right now TSMC is really pushing down into seven, but TSMC seven nanometer is really a density closer to Intel's 10 nanometer. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be getting into new, you know, like FinFET, blah, 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 blah. But but 
you know, IBM comes out and they kind of make this claim like, hey, with this two nanometer tech, what you're going to see is something I'm making these numbers up. These aren't the exact numbers, but it's like, you know, like a, a 50 percent reduction in battery life for for different types of computers and electronics, um, you know, if you keep the same performance. So you know, mm -hmm. if you had the same compute power you did today, but you use two nanometers, you'd save all this power. And that's that's all bunk. You know, it's like saying I cut my my grocery store budget by 75 percent. So my entire home budget has been cut by 75 percent. It's like all of the power, like radio management display. Look at your look at your phone stats. Is the Android system taking up more of your battery <laughs> or is it screen <laughs> that's taking up more of your battery? That That's the kind of thing that that like, you know, I. From that practical perspective, it's why I keep leaning on TickWatch as hard as I do, because they at least give me this this dumb low power display. Yep. Well, I mean, I, so I, the, I don't mean dumb isn't it's a bad idea. I mean, it's 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 a it's a passive just it, it meets the requirement and it screen. gets the job done. And the, the reason why I was kind of very surprised with it is because with the, the tick watch on the, the DTH one, uh, it actually has an IPS or TFT display. Sorry, it's a 1.55 TFT display. And it, there's massive bezels all around. I mean, if obviously it, it, it would have, it, it's, it's definitely, like I said, tailored for that experience, but it was very actually usable. Like, I mean, seriously, I used it for two weeks. And um, uh, with the exception of the fact that the button, I wish there was more functions to it. Now, is, it, is, other it than, is it like a maze fit though, where, I, I can kind of only realize that getting out to 10 day battery life if the screen if the screen is mostly off. So, um, yes, the, the display is mo so there's no always on. There is uh, basically the display does turn off uh, on its own. You can set basically, you know, do not disturb so on. But for the most part, yeah, uh, the display is off. Notification, as I said, were very limited. So you basically just got to read the notification, not much on the response there. Um, I feel like the, there are a few other things that could have been done a little bit better, maybe with music control, like at least with the TickWatch 3 Pro, when you're playing music on your smartphone, and obviously that's a part of Wear OS, uh, but the, the the watch automatically turns on the music player on the watch. The face changes when music is being played on the phone that it's connected to. The mm -hmm. GTH doesn't do that, and you have to go into the app drawer, scroll halfway down to find the actual music app to get the control on it. So that was a little bit of a... I feel like it's this dance that I, that's why I felt like the, the, the button should have had some shortcuts, like the ability of yeah. jumping into a specific mode. Uh, but once you get it for, for, when you use it for a couple of weeks and you're really getting go, go through a couple of main cycles, I mean, seriously, two weeks uh, and I only charged it once. That That's the level I, like, this is exactly reminding me of what the, the T-Rex is giving though, me. Those, those are enjoyable. Something. Now I'm back to this, which every four, three or four if, days I have to charge. If, if you've got any kind of like passive or always on display expect to charge that that watch after dinner time so the one plus watch finally got always on display and battery life is getting hit heavy like heavy they brought it in which i'm really happy that they did um and that was it was an update that they didn't announce originally i thought this was going to be part of the may update like the middle of may not not right now um but you know, overall, I, I like the the update. They did fix the sync issues for us, so that was a big thing that they also fixed. But battery life is, I mean, and, and there's not really a lot of selection for always on. It's like a consistent static, um, just uh, like a, a small pattern that you can add into the watch. So mm -hmm. the answer for me, at least at this point, and now that I'm done with the GTH, I could focus heavily on the watch, uh, the OnePlus watch, so I can put out my video hopefully next week. Um, <laughs> but I know I, I want to give them. I wanted to give it enough time to get the updates that I felt like got it to a usable yes, state and update again because it's like th the majority of people who might buy this thing are gonna buy it oh late. absolutely they're, they're not gonna buy it the you know the embargo because... week <laughs> which <laughs> which surprisingly they did sell out i don't know if it's because of supply but definitely the there seemed to be a demand for the watch itself especially being a web plus fan uh so it, it's a lot better. I'll just say this much. Uh, although step counting is still not on par. Like I, it's mm -hmm. still like the GTH would would, would give me four thousand. The, the one plus is giving me three thousand. I'm like, I feel like okay, that's a right. big margin of, and and it's not something that you can attribute because I'm wearing it on the right wrist as opposed to the left wrist. I mean, I can attribute maybe a hundred or two, but not a thousand. Well, difference. but what phone do you hold? I mean, what hand do you hold your phone in? Because uh, the I, phone, oh, well, depends actually. I use both. I was on the treadmill before we started our podcast, and I was like, oh. This is dumb. 
I'm holding my phone in my left hand. Which oh, is yeah. Where I wear my watch and is definitely like wrecking my step <laughs> count by holding my hand so still. So, well, so for me, when I'm when I run on um, on the treadmill, I usually just put it on that little. I'm, I'm assuming you're using the mob yeah. one. So, yeah, that little mount, which but, is. But then I can't do things, and I have to look d way down if I want to like read Reddit for, for sure. While yeah. streaming YouTube, I need <laughs> I need the phone up higher, and you're, I can. You're gonna be like, okay, honey, I'm right there. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> like running gun and that's right there like come on and, and i'm so practiced from like shooting vlogs that like <laughs> when i hold my phone still i hold my phone, my phone. still <laughs> it is there that, that muscle memory definitely uh kicks in right there and i did want to say gabriel uh Ga Gabi gabriel i uh, mentioned yeah i mentioned just earlier that he had the um s3 frontier and it still mm -hmm. gives him like a, a day and a half to two and that was for me i felt like it was a it was a uh, a pinnacle to a certain point of uh, where we started to get after that, started getting features removed. That was the last watch Samsung put out that supported was, MST and Gear, NFC. Your S2 to that frontier is is like peak Samsung. And, and then after that, has been kind of like cost feel, savings. Like, how do we make the, the watch? How do we exactly uh, more they took out MST it cheaper? And and at that at that day, I was like, you know, that's fine. They have an MST on the phone. I don't really have to use it on the watch. Everything's great. And then now they took MST out. So now we're all out out of you know. Yeah, I, I, I do. I wouldn't be cranky about that if they'd also removed it from the Exynos version, but they didn't. No, and they that's only the, that's pulled it from the Qualcomm, which makes no sense because to me, it's we're the anyways. ones that need it here. Anyway, the ones that I, we, uh, we don't need to relitigate. Let, yeah, let's let, let, let's let's not, not make this into a Samsung thing. But um, I do want to ask a question that <laughs> I did. I didn't get a chance to ask earlier, and I did want to throw this out because there is something that I, seems too good to be true. Uh oh. Um, and I'll say this. Uh, I, on I, so I'm in the process of trying to find a GPU. I need it. I need to get a new GPU to sure. fix my problems, but the, the, I'm looking for a 3080. I've been trying to ask everybody that I know if anybody knows anywhere I can get one. I found one off on Craigslist. So that should kind of set the story. Uh, uh, already the, the, some red flags. Sure. Already red, massive red flags. Uh, but I found it that uh, basically a 3080 uh, founder's edition mint condition and selling for a thousand bucks. Hmm. So what caught my eye, obviously, is it's a thousand bucks. I mean, obviously, it's still more yeah. expensive than MSRP. MSRP is $699. This should not, you know, this is they're still making some money. As I started talking to the guy, um, he shares with me a screenshot of the order where he got it from. He got it from StockX, one of the sites that does sell things um, online. But he still wants to sell it for a thousand dollars. I keep asking him to show me that the, the video card is running. He's like, it's been verified, blah, blah, blah. He sends me pictures of things, but he bought it for 2200 or at least the li the the link that he sent me was for twenty two hundred. He he doesn't want to show me the the video card running, but he's selling me on the it's sold and it's really good. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, should I'm not I, like I don't even want to drive down. There. I feel like it's just too many red flags. Like I feel that, like I should just step away. But wrong. It's just so appealing, like the appeal of getting so close to MSRP, which you can't even find the thirty eighty, not even yeah. a thirty ninety. <laughs> like uh, the the first link I pulled up on a thirty eighty on eBay was twenty nine hundred dollars. That's that was my first red flag. Oh. And I'm like, when I when when he showed me the list, I said, "Are you sure you're selling it for a thousand? He said, "Yeah." I like, think that's sketchy. Yeah, that's scammy at, at best. And I, you guys could let me. Yeah, so I uh, got uh, on there as well. It's it's not sexy. Um, but I mean, if you just need some, so wait a minute, you, you, you need something because your GPU isn't working. I, you're just I'm having, it. so again, I don't know post motherboard, which gigabyte has the motherboard. So the new motherboard, I was very happy that things booted up, but the system hasn't been, hasn't been feeling right. Like, I feel like I'm either I'm going to have to basically just restart the whole thing like fresh install everything and, and try to just redo and see if that fixes my problem but i'm having some serious locking some serious pr uh, problems within premiere like premiere crashes periodically for no reason mm -hmm. um the pc locks up in middle of just middle of not not at boot up but like in the middle of doing uh, during the workflow i'm working with things and it just locks up for some reason I don't think it's the motherboard. The motherboard is literally brand new. Um, I even made sure this time that I did follow all the correct instructions and I updated the BIOS to the latest mm -hmm. version that is not beta. Yeah. I'm not going to play that game. I'm not playing that one again. 
but seriously, the the system hasn't been doing right, and I don't know what I what what went wrong, and I mm -hmm. can't test it with anything else. So for me, it was a, at the time when I was trying to figure out the whole thing. I figured I should pretty much just maybe upgrade the twenty the twenty eighty to a thirty eighty if I'm able to find one, but I can't. So the answer yeah. is for me, keep looking, and I figured you know Craigslist was the other place. But you're right. Now, Twenty two. Just in terms of troubleshooting, if you want, I mean, like, I still have some of my older cards. Like, I've got a hilarious nine seventy that you I, wouldn't I, want to keep <laughs> in your system. Um, but I, I still have the sixteen sixty super. If you just wanted to pop that in there and see, like, I mean, that, it's, it's that, roughly. I, like, I may I may take you up on that. Yeah, just to just to be able to see if that fixes any because the the problems that I'm having is again not in the rendering process. It's in the in just working within the system mm -hmm. and. Um, I will say that I had to uninstall and reinstall Call of Duty for it to even work because that was a big problem to me for, as well. Um, Windows unauthorized my system because apparently once it recognizes the motherboard change that it's no longer activated and I had to go through the whole bunch of hoops with Mike. I had to call them to, to tell them that I did not, I'm not installing this version of Microsoft of Windows on another PC, that this is the same PC, but I replaced because of a defective okay, piece. Okay, well, I think we can do it for you this time. But... That, exactly. I, I, I had to kiss the ring and uh, to get the Surface. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I may want to, yeah, once I have a little bit more time to to start yeah, kind of troubleshooting. I, because... I mean, like, I, I, I'll, I'll just, like, hand you my nook and, like, let you go to town. <laughs> it'll, and... it'll, it'll be a good... It's just I want to I want to be able to be consistent. Like this week wasn't that bad. I pushed out maybe three videos, one, uh, two, on uh, one on the Arabic and two on the English side. Uh, I finally reviewed <laughs> the uh, studio. That took me a long. <laughs> I felt like a. How long can it take you to review a pair of headphones? Uh, apparently this long. Um, I I can't I can't like front. I okay. You know, full disclosure, and and I don't know if Jeff is still in the live chat because I, I bet you he probably feels the same way. Headphones are not easy to review. Mm -mm. They're really not. If personal. all you're going to do is read down the specs and say buy or don't buy because the label is popular, then yeah, you can knock out a headphone review really easily. Um, my headphone reviews take multiple nights of active listening comparing the headphones against headphones that I know really well. That so I, I, I know that I trust what I'm hearing when I'm mm -hmm. listening to them. And then I still have to find some time in there to kind of enjoy what I'm doing with those headphones. So like the, the I finally got that video out on the ultra zones, the performance. Yep, I saw them. Those headphones are so mellow that they're, they're like ear candy headphones, just lush, oh, yeah. Jeff bass still rich, su super, super <laughs> sweet. And that that review, it kind of took me like three weeks to get through listening, comparing, writing up a script, rewriting the script because I listened to some other things that kind of changed my mind on them. <laughs> and finally, like sitting down to talk about them in front of a camera. I mean, that that was like three weeks worth of work to watch YouTube go about a thousand views. You're good. That's all people care about. Um, headphone reviews are, are, are not, they're, they're actually some of the most technically challenging analysis videos mm -hmm. that, that I can do just because at, I, I just don't believe my own opinion until I can like grotesquely verify <laughs> my own opinion on them. Yeah, no. And, and Jeff saying it's, it's worth it for the, oh, yeah, he's, he's for to them. Yeah, yeah, no, he's uh, definitely, you know, when you're, when you're giving out the, the review, you to follow through, giving out the specifics, giving the details and, and just the ability, to, like you said, to share it. But there's, I feel like there's also the, the time difference is, is needed to find out that the, the quirks, the little things that you don't get from a couple of days oh, of yeah. playing with a pair of headphones. I don't believe my opinions on headphones until like. I've lived in them. Exactly. And that's I, that 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 was for me the hardest thing with the with the, uh, the studio because in the middle of working on the studio I ended up having other headphones that came in and came in and came in and I was going through a, like seriously the amount of emails I get a week on uh, true wireless headphones and headphones in general uh, <laughs> it is it's just like seriously I think I'm on a on a spam list of something uh and I don't it, mind it, it don't get me wrong it it's appreciated. So, so there are so many I mean like I I kind of I kind of jumped in on uh, what was it earphones Right, yeah, you, know, was, you got yeah. to play with those earphones, the 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 pros. I'm I'm glad I did. I mean, from a from a very tech nice. standpoint, 
those are amazing bang for buck option mm -hmm. earbuds. And I kind of feel the story on those is a little less audiophile and it's a little more gadget. Okay, so I can abbreviate some of the conversation on listening habits or what your tuning might look like. Mm -hmm. I pick up some Sennheisers. I pick up oh, some yeah. Audio Technicas. If I pick up these Ultra Zones, that is a completely different audience. Anyone who might possibly care about my opinion on the performance A80s is speaking an entirely different language, different language. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. than someone who was looking up the ear fun. And, and it's like trying to reconcile that audience with my own opinions is it is a weeks long process to make sure I know WTF I'm talking about. <laughs> well, and, and to top it off with uh, with the studios, uh, Huawei did a little bit of a different approach to this. They gave them um, L2H, L2D, uh, I forget the name of the, the, the technology. There's, um, oh, L2HC, sorry. I have a mm. cheat sheet on the side here. Um, <laughs> so uh, Huawei did it where they gave AAC and SBC uh, uh, tech for, you know, transfer tech, the data transfer and codec uh, for audio on any Android device. But if you want to be able to get the L2HC, which is their higher frequency, 96 kilohertz uh, with 24-bit processing, you need it to be on a Mate, uh, on a Huawei phone running EMUI 11 or later. So the Mate 40 was the only phone I was able to test it on, which weird enough, did not support any of my music playing applications. So I ended up having a, it was a very weird, like transferring files, putting them on to try to play flag file. So there's a whole bunch of experiences that kind of limited the experience for me. So I treated it as a, as a pair of headphones, like how would it work with any smartphone and how does it work uniquely on mm -hmm. Huawei phones? So which I don't think a lot of people that That's are concerned. already a technical barrier. That, like, yeah, that, that was already. Yeah, no, absolutely. It had uh, it. It's going to hit a certain. And obviously, I'm like really late to the show. Uh, but it was it was fun to, to listen. But like there are certain like little details that for me are a big thing. The ability of taking the headphones off your ears and be able to turn the cups the right direction to put them on the table. That to me is a feature because believe it or okay. not, every manufacturer does it differently. Um, like some of them will actually turn correctly so that you're able to put them straight down when you're out, you want to talk to somebody, you take off your headphones, put them down. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't, they sit down, but the cups are facing up. So like, I feel like a weird situation. So those are little things that you want to be like, if you're looking for a pair of headphones that could make it or break it for you on top of the audio. Uh, and of course the wear, does it, the day overheat? Do they cause you to sweat after over 30 minutes for a conversation? Does that sweat How? condense on the inside of the ear yeah, cup? And exactly. Really and and does, way? The, the long-term effect comes from having it for weeks. So that's why I try not to try never to do parallel, uh, you know, uh, earphones because they're or headphones. They're specifically very unique. So I'm glad I was able yeah. to finally put it out. Um, I, I got to spread mine out. Like I, yeah. there are a couple other headphones I should be kind of jumping the cut videos on. But if I go back to back to back to back to back, one, yeah. it's so much listening that my ears burn out. Like I, I just stop being able to hear Mm -hmm. critical differences and and like then i know like this is dangerous because i also need my ears for work <laughs> i need to be no, able no, to I, I, hear at things listen at things <laughs> and, and so maintain that. speaking of listen and, and i and i love to be able to do a small little segue or site you know let's do a pivot over back sure. to our gaming topic um the fact that gaming smartphones have headphone jacks, and, and obviously, mm -hmm. welcome back to the ROG. Uh, very, very happy to see that the ROG Phone 5 sure. is coming back with a headphone jack. Um, Dig, although digging I it, digging it on the Black Shark, not, the, not not the best headphone jack. It is it is not an audiophile grade, super killer amp listening experience, and it, it, I don't care. I'm just so happy, <laughs> happy it's, that yeah. it's on a decent budget mid-ranger budget phone for me the experience is a little bit mixed with the rg phone 5 because on one end you have the high quality dac built yeah. into one headphone but then you flip it sideways and you start playing with the little case the heat the cooling fan that they sent out which again i still cannot take off of this phone because if i do i'll never be able to put it back on <laughs> <laughs> I, it's so I have a, sad. I, it, it is. And I try, so, okay, so here it is. I tried KV. I was like, okay, wait, you know, I'll just do this. I'll just try to find another one. Maybe they're selling it. They're selling for like a hundred bucks for this little cooler thing. I'm like, seriously? For what? I mean, like, 20 bucks on Amazon for a generic two. I could have, no, no, totally. Or or even I could have just used the one from the Black Magic, seriously. But because, <laughs> because this cooler has the triggers, it adds function. It's not just the cooling. But the headphone right. jack that's on there is so subpar to the standard one. It's not at all like they they didn't really pay attention to that. So truly, you only have one option for great audio. But 
the fact that we have a headphone jack is a big factor for these things. They're writing mm -hmm. not only latest specs, you know, processor, RAM, fastest internal storage, but they include a headphone jack, which apparently is a miracle for flagships because that doesn't exist at the higher end. Right. Like, why? Why does that make sense to it's Sony? Well, well, yeah, Sony, and and of course, uh, how how Sony, I mean, the 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 tangent. How ridiculous is it that in 2021, the only phone we're gonna get this year without any kind of disruption, hole punch, or notch on the screen with a headphone jack and a, a 4K top tier, a, a top -tier premium display. SOC yep. and micro SD card expansion. We're only going to get one phone. Well, who would have thunk that that would be literally like Sony's crown to keep um, and, and literally their, their game now because nobody else is even playing that game. It, it's... It's it's amazing that they're doing that it. I'm very happy, but it's also kind mind. of very, very. It's a very weird indicator of how few. I mean, my hope is obviously that they they stick to their guns and they keep with this because that's something that people appreciate about them. For sure. um, I also did see that right. the I, that, that, that was that was a tangent. We we know Xperia will eventually <laughs> some at some point come out on the market. But I, I want to get back. You were saying about about. Um, the ROG no, and the yeah, headphone the, the headphone jack for me was so. It was during my testing with it, it was the biggest thing because I enjoy the music. Like you're playing, and it is a very big difference in performance. Even with regular headphones, I'm not talking about like high quality, like I'm not trying to play some really high quality headphones or really I'm just saying well, when, when, music. When, you're, when you're gaming, what are you what are you using? You're not using your your bear dynamics? <laughs> no, I'm using my uh <laughs> no, uh generally when I'm playing, I'm actually using my uh Bang and Olufsen uh in-ear uh plugged in headphones. Oh, those little B and O earbuds. It's the one that came with our uh, with our LG. I think was it the V20? Right, right, the V20. Yeah. yeah. So I love those. They sound great. They're easy to use. They're portable. They're not too big, and, and they always tend to give me the best performance when it comes mm -hmm. down to audio. And of course, with the with the ROG Phone Five for me, I, I really enjoy the music. But literally switching from it when I, because I was playing the game and I'm like, ah, you know what? Let me just put it at the bottom. The just switching it, the audio, it's almost like the amp isn't even strong enough on it. The audio dips for some reason, and the audio literally feels like I'm listening from. I'm not trying to put it down, but like seriously, like it felt like a degrade, de uh, degradation in audio and that the amp is just either not there or turned way down. But yeah. there's really like the 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 interface on this directly from the controller should never be used. Um, but I, I can't really fault it though. Uh, so I'll have to say this little caveat. I am using it with a makeshift pin connection. So I can't really oh, be a hundred percent. Maybe so, that's disrupting something there. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, yeah, because the the experience on this is very. Although I, I, I'd be surprised if. Okay, so that's going through the second USB port it on is. the ROG, uh, right? It's going. Yeah. It go, well, so no, no, no. Uh, if it's not pin connectors, it's there's, they're no longer USB on the. Uh, so oh, the, that's right. They don't have yeah. the side U. It's not a proper no, full USB C. They still have the USB C, but it's not mounted to the pin. So they so what they used to have in the past in the first ROG Phone two, remember they had two USB ports, right? There's two USB Cs, one colored yellow or orange, and sure. one standard black. So the black one was the one that you could charge from on the side, and you could use also for video out. But the colored one or the other one, I think was the orange color, that was the one that mounted into the cooler that worked with the phone for the ROG Phone 2. On this one, they moved over to pin connectors. Yeah. So there's now a little row of five or six pins. And that's, I actually damaged two of those pins. Got so it. I, okay. I would be very surprised if there is any way they are able to route the output of yeah. an ESS DAC to two different analog yeah, connectors yeah i i i i have a hard time believing that their solution is a y adapter in the phone i to, to point audio in two different directions so what they've got to be doing is using some I other kind so. of of output so well, when you, i'm you're assuming going it's through, the onboard the fan yeah, it's yeah gotta no, be I'm, I'm assuming it's the yeah, so I'm thinking is there's the ESS DAC that's running on the headphone jack that's on the bottom, and then you're also they may be using just the standard Qualcomm audio, the the standard processing of the 888 on it. I, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure, but the performance is so different. It's like it, literally, it could. I mean, one of the reasons it might be 100 dollars, it might have its own janky like Realtek style DAC in the fan. 
there there is a possibility and i and i think i i may so that's why without so, being able to connect it to anything else you'd have to disassemble you, it and see yeah. if there's some weird little DAC in there but i'd i'd be shocked if they were including a saber DAC in their fan I, I, no no i i think this is purely uh it, it's it purely in a uh, a nice to have kind of thing. So for for more of a cable management, but the reality is, I mean, so for me, it's it's more about the placement of it. It's present mm -hmm. on the top right, right. So it's not too bad, but then it always hits the the your index finger when you're playing. So if you're trying to play, you're trying to go sideways. Your finger is in front of it. That was the reason why I switched over to the bottom one. But so short answer: headphone jack, great um, audio quality, still kind of a mix, but content on it watching movies is just crazy good like seriously these large smartphones even the red magic 6 we're getting super mm -hmm. large very nice displays um i wish the red magic 6 was a little bit stronger on the brightness level like i feel like it could have done a little bit better for outdoor gameplay but i think it was still very nice so it's really uh <laughs> i love it he says he says jumping with it oh my god headphone jacks are so hard to review yes are uh, headphones i mean you you want to think that it's going to be this simple conversation headphones are not easy and there, there's we're, we're, we're actually kind of in this amazing like quiet renaissance of earbuds and headphones and traditional cable to audio i mean yeah i, I just recently did all that work with snapdragon sound and yeah, Bluetooth, yeah and yet at the same time some of the things i'm most excited about are you know, like acoustic technology, which is mostly for speakers and for mm -hmm. cabled audio um, or or like these little portable DACs. Um, oh, yes, yes. Like the Q3 or the FIO BTR5, mm -hmm. which uh, allow me to kind of migrate some of my favorite cabled audio over. But, you know, from from like $20 KZs all the way up to like $400 professional in-ear monitors to like $600 cans, um, you, you, you have to adopt a completely different style of analysis and uh, just a totally different, um, way that you, you share and you converse about the experience. It's, it's, it's such a, a, a head trip when you really start digging into, um, like trying to review a pair of headphones, but, um, the, uh, the other thing, like a DTNL saying, why not take the output from the normal headphone jack and route that output via the fan output, no jack on the fan, just pass through. The, the, the thing about having a premium audiophile grade headphone solution is what you're describing is like kind of just putting in some kind of splitter or yeah, adapter. No, exactly. and, and when you start messing with that kind of cabling internally on such a compressed piece of hardware, which is just full of electromagnetic noise and interference um properly shielding it and 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 making a split clean where you also you can't fully anticipate like someone might try and plug two audio outputs they, at they the may same time. they, they may you exactly know? one person on one side i guess if you're playing with somebody else no exactly and 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 so like the 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 notion of super high quality premium audio audiophile grade also depends a lot on reducing noise and minimizing distortion and as soon as you start routing stuff like that in inside a noisy environment like a phone mm -hmm. i i just i don't think that's what they would do i don't think that's how you would do it um so someone could please prove me wrong it'd be really exciting to see that they've got a special kind of pin out and that maybe just your fan isn't working properly no I, I, something and, like that that's, but that's I, I just what I'm I don't think i just don't think that's the right solution i i don't think that's what they would have done and especially knowing that asus gets really persnickety on their higher end gear about audio like especially well, on their motherboards i i think uh, they would the, the x5 thing. the x570 that i got has a much better dac than the, the, the 470 that i did which that's was really though. nice yeah that's no awesome. no it's really like it, there's such a big like when you when you upgrade like okay so motherboards are very i feel like motherboards should be one of those things that you should not skimp on if you can don't skimp on the motherboard the processors like the the, it's, the go it, down it's one your own processor it's it, it is so for me I, I learned a very massive lesson with the with the motherboard problem that i'm going through right now um it's the the fact that I decided to go with a slightly more gamer, uh, lower budget, more budget friendly uh, motherboard because at the time I, I was, it was an upgrade. I was going from uh, basically the eighteen hundred X over to the thirty nine hundred X, and I wanted to kind of get a good motherboard. But I spent so much money on the processor, I didn't want to spend so much. Right. Long story long, 
Um, <laughs> it's, it's always, isn't it? Um, having not having that backup BIOS for flashing uh, your BIOS was a big mistake for me not to have. I had them with the uh, with the ASUS motherboards, and I decided to skimp on it, and I that just came back and bit me, you know, very badly. So. But then all these little extra things, you know, the the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on this, a dual Ethernet ports again, back back, you know, like at the olden days when I used to have dual Ethernets on a mm -hmm. motherboard and having a decent DAC. So th there's a lot of nice things in there that I appreciate, uh, and I and I'm hopefully in hopefully in the near future I'll be able to work out all my little little bit of hiccups and crashes and, and so on and maybe i just want to maybe all i have to do is really reinstall windows just do a fresh not even a fresh but like a literally an over install yeah. itself sometimes that fixes it as well uh, but yeah th those are little things that kind of like i, I appreciate the the little add-ins the little improvements in audio performance you know uh, the, the ability of being able like to plug these guys in and not have to worry about you know and i don't know that i don't want to use the q3 but i feel like the q3 for me is very nice especially because it imp improves any audio any smartphone yeah. i use except for samsung's the samsung <laughs> um it'll improve <laughs> any smartphone experience <laughs> I, I I feel like it's a this it's is a so running frustrating joke. again. It is, it's it like it, when it works on everything else. Um, if if you'll pardon, I kind of want to jump in here because there's there was like a bit of a conversation happening about like yeah Lisa was talking about smartphone uh, headphone reviews and oh that's right yeah yeah she was saying it was people very, very... commenting on like oh you're 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 wrong or something like that. I and and, and Issa at oh, some I point we'd, we'd love one, to have you back on the show and i don't want to turn every appearance of yours into some uh, sort, sort of examination of the tech reviewing community yeah but from from my experiences in trying to help marie with her audio issues first of all the the earbud market is grossly lopsided towards uh male consumers from from the casings on mm -hmm. in-ear monitor style earbuds to tiny little bullets it is phenomenally difficult i mean just like we were taking with smartwatches right yeah. you know marie's using a gtr2 but she's really looking at all of the smaller options from these fitness trackers because the gtr2 from amazfit was built for someone bigger than me you know wrists larger than mine so but i that, feel like this one was done the opposite counted. direction this, yeah. The, so, yeah, yeah, so that's this exactly. One is the I mean, direction. she wants something smaller, Apple Watch sized, right? So that, that's what we're looking Apple at. For her. To, to that, to that same token, the biology of headphones. Headphones are the most personal wearable technology you can own. I mean, they, yeah. they to a degree that they insert into your body. I mean, it really doesn't get more intimate than that. And the vast majority of these types of solutions are not made accessible to women. They are not made for more petite frames. Um, so you're immediately at a disadvantage if you're a, a, a woman trying to talk about premium audio in this space because a huge chunk of the market is, is just biologically not designed for you. It, it took us going down and getting Marie's ear scanned and getting custom molded ear tips. I remember and that one, yeah. At, at 30, oh, I should actually, I shouldn't say her age, but at, at her, at her current age, this is the first time in her life she's ever had earbuds that fit inside her ears. No, oh, Vanya has the same position. Um, almost none of the ones I've ever had uh, ever, ever fit. fit correct. Yeah. Ever and if, fit. if one fits, the other one doesn't. It does, doesn't. And then there's not the tips that they provide are just not the right ones. And then also, I mean, like for, for the, the people who comment on these types of things, will never give you the consideration that because these headphones fit your skull differently than a man's, they're not going to appreciate that what you hear is going to be fundamentally different than what I'm going to hear because I've got a giant skull. I've got tiny little hobbit hands and wrists, but a big old noggin. Um, I'm I'm like a cartoon character, just the opposite proportions. It just um, happens to make great ramen that I still haven't had a chance to try yet. But yes, you're coming goes. soon, though, dude. We're both vaccinated. Coming. I am yeah. making you some ramen. It's going to be absolutely. Bomb. But absolutely. but but the, but the fact that your skull is literally a different shape means how they interact with your biology, how they resonate with your ears. You're going to hear fundamentally different tuning and frequencies of sound than what a dude is going to hear. Yeah. I, I cannot imagine trying to approach 
an audiophile community or a mostly male dominant tech community talking about audio with any type of personal experience because they're going to be insufferable. Well, that's not what I hear. Oh, you can't do this. Why not just get smaller ear tips? And you're like, you just want to like take their face and rake it against like a, like a, a, a just a, the clackiest keyboard that you can find just over and over and over again, because there will be no empathy for, for your experiences being in the slightest difference. When, when, when you really truly appreciate good audio, you're taking into account like, the finest nuances of frequency response, reflection, resonance, noise, distortion. And the only way to kind of kind of experience that is to say and admit my exact biology is having this type of experience with this product on this song. You have to go that deep. Mm -hmm. But someone who's like mostly just checking out like, you know, AirPod earbud reviews on YouTube will never get to that level of understanding and is just going to go straight for the type of nonsense that you see in your comments on YouTube. So with the greatest of sympathies, if, if you're not digging it, don't, don't waste your time because that's an audience of people that cannot grok that a girl (laughs) <laughs> might literally hear something different listening to the same earbuds as a dude might. It, it's, it is very, it is definitely a tailored experience. It is, you're right. And when you, if we looked at almost 90%, with the exception of Samsung designing a few color options, but essentially the same hardware anyways, um, you know, with the beans or when you go into some of the other options, it's, it is hard. It is, it's hard. Yeah. Uh, um, and it, for me, it's like, like to this day, Vanya still listens to speakers because of it. Like I, I'm sorry, I've gotten I just many, got many. Carries. There's no I in empathy. <laughs> <laughs> I like I, I can't even claim to be like so woke on this. I, I got to tell you, it was it was less than two years ago, and I saw some guy at Me Audio like shoving an optical scanner into my wife's ears, and watching her pop those into her ears and for the first time in her life they fit Mm -hmm. and they enabled her to hear things in music that she had never heard before really laid out for me half the population of this planet does not have access to that to same kind of audio gear that I completely take for granted. And that's sad. I mean, that's intense. It's something so basic and so personal and we it should be so easy. It should be immediate. And the best we can do are these gut rot open ear earbuds that are terrible for your hearing is ridiculous. It, it is very, uh, that's why I said it. I mean, it, it takes, even with regular headphones or even in, in-ear earbuds, they're very personal. You need to spend time with them. But if you're already starting at that level where you're not able to truly experience them in the same way, it's going to be something that I feel like something has to change. And I hope that the work that Issa's doing, at least bringing some of that stuff to light, because to a certain but, point, but I also I also understand. I mean, like, because we 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 uh, we talked to her, uh, uh, we talked with her about yeah. this, and and like already when you're kind of facing a, a tech community that's going to give you grief for having any kind of different opinion, that's going to be magnified tenfold if you mm-hmm. happen to be of the female persuasion. I could I could totally understand. It's not worth the grief. Why, why keep bashing your head against the wall to try and share your experiences on something like audio if yeah. the majority of people that are seeking out audio reviews are going to be like, nah, brah. You know, <laughs> like it's 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 intense. It's, it is. it's really it's, it's going to be. A- and I, I feel for people that can't quite um, that, 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 that don't get to experience the things that I I, I, I absolutely adore about this as a hobby because there are a bunch of gatekeepers standing in their way. It is, it is, it's, it, I, my hope is that it gets better at some point, but, um, what I would probably say, one of the things that helped me with a lot of my, I would say 
you know, just negative or even just commentary and so on. As I, it doesn't hurt to actually, if you know there's sort of specific words that they like to use, like just use the filters, Gita, if you, if that would help at all. If there are specific keywords that you find that you see a lot of people using, set that as part of your channel's filter to take out those comments. I, I use them a lot, mostly on those spam emails, the bot emails, you know, the, you know, right. love me and all of those things. There's, uh, I feel like a significant chunk of of Issa's comments could be easily policed by putting in "well, actually." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you thinking at least thirty percent of her comments just evaporate if, if you knew? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I would say definitely experiment with it, Issa. But um, <laughs> the 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 biggest thing for me was because for the longest time, I, not just the spam stuff, but. There's always the, you know, give me free phone. There is that, it, that, that type that, you know, just like, you know, when you're going to give a giveaway and all of that stuff. So at some point, realistically, you have to try to, you know, police it a little bit, but that could also help a little bit with maybe bringing down the level. It's not going to get everybody, obviously no filter will, but um, it just, you know, YouTube sometimes comments are very. Now, I, I, I bet you, I, I actually, especially because I'm sure she's consulted with Josh a bit too. I'm, I'm sure. She oh, has. I, yeah. In some filter. no and and of course yeah we, and, and we hear it and, and i saw josh's comment uh, earlier there where is his ramen invitation <laughs> josh i'm still trying to get mine i'm just kidding um I, if we, we want to make it a big old family want, group thing i think yeah, we've all gotten shots we're probably all need to set some time we're just going to go raid juan's house just show up at the door one day and we'll be like where's my ramen ba where's it's, my ramen uh, it, I, I'm I'm telling you I'm I'm on Very to gen, I'm on to version three of this and it's getting really good. You're so, on version um, three. Mm -hmm. I didn't even get a chance to taste. Per okay, I didn't. I didn't, I, I should have. Well, to be fair, I, version I have the one rest. was really good. Version two was better. Version three got nice. Like I'm I'm proud of me. So <laughs> I am jealous of Mrs. Some Gadget Guy at this point <laughs> and Mr. Some Gadget Guy. <laughs> oh my God. Um, we <laughs> more I love that. Stupid. <laughs> Where's my ramen one? Uh, some <laughs> some makes awesome ramen guy. That should be his new one. It's nice. It's pretty long. <laughs> I dig it. Do it just you rolls. even ramen bra? Do you even ramen bra? That's how. It, I mean, this obviously is a is a big homage to. I I feel like it was one of my my not one my favorite spot for ramen in L.A. Till obviously. Till the pandemic, uh, till about a few months into the pandemic, where unfortunately they decided to close, and then they somebody bought them, and now they're another store in the same location. They mm -hmm. still have ramen, but it's not even the same. But they never reopened, so yeah. they're not opening anywhere. They we lost that magical recipe of umami, for the lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. um, well, and it was a good fit for you too because it, it was, was vegetarian. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it was it was close, not too far. And um, it was like my family loved it. I mean, you and I went there a couple of times. And so to me, even like I said, during the pandemic, when there were things uh, going on, um, my wife and I, we would literally drive and do pickup. We would pick up the ramen yeah. and bring it back because we couldn't eat it there. And I felt like I wanted to support them. I wanted to keep getting going with. And then, yeah. So having having you, you know, do your, well, do your I, thing. I, I started with chicken specifically. Like I wanted to, to kind of use that as the protein source and then try and work the flavors around it. I'm getting really good at kind of measuring out the sesame. sesame it is, it is. It's a common, it's, it's literally a chemistry. The, um, that, the, the whole concept started obviously with the whole trip to Japan a couple of years ago and, um, uh, seeing the, the chef behind, uh, you know, at, at the ramen shops and so on, when they're putting together the sauce, it's not just the broth, the broth is the base, but there's all those little extra, you know, additives and so on. And, and they measure it and everything. And then it just, you, they give you the bowl and you're now, like seriously licking the bowl down. What, what I really need to get better at though, is my, is my bamboo game. So, ah. um, my memma is not, is not there yet. Like I don't have that down. But you know, like when I can get to the bamboo shoots is like kind of a like a topper uh -huh. for what's going on. I feel like I will have have like the complete bowl of ramen experience. Have, so, have you gotten uh, the egg situation going on correctly? You know, or are you not doing don't egg? really eat egg? I ah, kind of okay. leave that part up to Marie okay, because okay. then also I, I, I like to pressure cook it, which 
if you were to try and like do the eggs in the broth, like that would be weird. Oh, no, no, no. The eggs are always separate. Yeah. You always do the eggs separately. Well, they're, uh, they're actually, there's a, a really interesting kind of like comfort foodie sort of, it, it was kind of a riff on like a sukiyaki that I saw okay. that someone was doing the eggs in the ramen broth. And you're like, okay, that's Did interesting. Not. Okay. But you but, wouldn't, you, that, that would be super gross in a pressure cooker. So yeah, I just didn't like, bother. Because you'd have to keep the shell and like, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it'll be a different, it'll be a different dish. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, there, there, short answer is we will obviously bring that to you guys. I hope that one of these days when we're able to do our, the best of our week thing, it'll be, we'll be back to some type of in-person LA is doing better keeps mm -hmm. going into the next level and keep going and going. So I hope we can kind of okay. stay on, on that, on that path. Um, we got a few couple of days of hot days. I don't know how that works. It's kind of a weird situation going on. It was beautiful though. It, but it seriously hard. though, how do we hit a hundred and plus? And then the day after we're down to this global like warming, like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually really concerned. Like, I think this fire season is going to be kind of gross. We had because. we had what three, four fires, uh, and it was when it was in April last month. Um, so yeah, it's very weird this year. I, I don't know. Um, but the the fact that I would say this much, I'm, I'm glad that we're safe. I'm glad that all of our uh, everybody in the chat, everybody, all of our you know, Josh, Isa, Aditya, Gary, uh, Steve, Gary, everybody else, everybody's in the chat. I'm glad that everybody's still you know with us and they're hanging out and we're kicking it. We're still able to talk. We're we have the ability of talking, having these type of conversations, which are therapeutic, if, if anything, on a weekly basis, because it's a little bit different than both of our shows, right? We have our own independent podcast that we do, the SGTQA, great show on Mondays. Sure. Um, and what I love about our show is we get a chance to kind of just kick back and we're talking ramen, we're talking, you know, <laughs> consistency of egg. And then we're jumping from headphones to the smartwatches. We're talking about the Qualcomm talk and, and, and seriously, like we went deep diving into <laughs> like, you know, Neptune pine and all of those things. Um, but it, it's, it's, you know, thank God we're still around and hopefully we'll, yeah. we'll, you know, we'll get to somewhat of a, a good, a better position in the future. Oh, and we'll be able to so much closer. I think so that's, that's what's exciting now is, is it is, it is. And, um, we're right on, on, so right on the cusp. Exactly. And, and, and I know, uh, Jeff El Jefe is, you know, he's like, I, I can't have too much salt. I said, I'm pretty sure we can find some kind of recipe that, that'll, that'll, <laughs> that'll, uh, I hope will meet the requirements. That's, ramen that's is hard. a little trickier. I mean, like, yeah, I know. Ramen, yeah. ramen is heavy. Ramen is, is heavy on the uh, on sodium. the uh, sodium and the yeah. <laughs> flavor enhancers. Let's just say that much. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to pull more of my umami from like mushrooms, but at some point you got to dash in sesame seed oil, and then you got to hit it with some soy sauce. And so yeah. it gets, it get, yeah, it's it's tough. I, it's it because I I'm I'm very conscious about my sodium intake, but I also like. I've got a budget around this ramen, so I just won't have anything with salt in it for a week before and a week after. And that's how I kind of do it. <laughs> Dude, I, I had some really good uh, curry tonight for dinner for iftar. So to me, I am I hit I hit a very happy. See, there's there are certain dishes that you that just hit the spot. Curry is one of them. Ramen is one of them. And mm -hmm. they just, they, they just do it. And for me, it was, like you said, it was a good, nice, uh, not too hot, not too cold, kind of like medium average sunny Southern California kind of day. And, um, it was a good, I, I was a little bit, uh, skeptic on eating, uh, curry and during Ramadan because of the spices and so on. I didn't mm -hmm. want to kind of like risk it, but no, it, it was good. Uh, had some samosas cool. with it, uh, some non man, I, I could, I could totally leave here and go and finish the rest, but <laughs> I'll probably have a little bit more in the morning. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's, you know, there's a lot of things going on and uh, you, you had a sure. couple of videos coming up, which I think, you know, as you said, this week was a little mm -hmm. bit light. Um, there are, I'll say this much, there are some devices coming in in the near future <laughs> that we can talk about. Uh, I don't, I don't have, I don't have them yet, but uh, there, are, there are some that are on the way. Um, and, you know, the Thick Watch was a very nice, I think it was a fun watch to, to check out. I, I'll say that much. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Um, surprisingly, um, you know, uh, powerful for what it does at, at the price point that they offered. And I feel like mob void did a decent job on, and, and I love the fact that they gave it app support, that it does work with the, uh, with the tick, with the mob void app, with the, with the ability of tracking and the information in there is it reminded me a lot of what Amazfit does. So very happy. Okay. And if you're, if you're interested, check it out, put out a video on that today. Um, and of course, if you're looking into the black shark three, or sorry, black shark four, uh, <laughs> view 20 edition. Cool. 
uh, Quan <laughs> dropped it. Twenty edition. <laughs> so yeah, the, the the Black Shark's out. I've um I'm almost wrapped up on a longer look, kind of my review wrap up on the One Plus Nine Pro. Yeah, and then I think I want to go back and do a revisit. Uh, here it is on the Velvet. Because oh, yeah. the Velvet not only has Android 11, but there was also a a, a quick, there was like a 200 meg uh, patch that okay. went out after Android 11 came out. And I, you know, I installed it. Android 11 doing better on the Velvet than we did. Than the V60, the yeah. So no, so, no, no fresh restart? Um, yeah, I actually kind of let it go straight just because I hadn't done a lot on the Velvet. Oh, okay. I'd, yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd ha- I had to wipe out the Velvet. Um, you mean the V60? No, I had to wipe out the velvet oh, okay. for some reason. Like I was doing a bunch of dumb stuff on it and and like I just ended up just kind of nuking it. And so when Android 11 came, I didn't really feel like that. I, I only had like my basic email account in there. I didn't have anything installed. So I just let that ride. So pretty but, much, yes, just fresh but system. I r- really want to go back because like, like, like we were saying, you know, Sony is going to be the only premium tier phone with all this stuff. Um, for a phone that cost as much as a Galaxy A71, 765, 5G, a good headphone jack, even if it's not a quad DAC, memory card support, good cameras. It shoots very good 4K video, even for not having the nicest, you know, like it doesn't have the the manual video, uh, manual video. Mode. Yeah, that was, yeah, but, I felt like well, LG had to keep something for the V60. The, 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 the nice wing, control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so memory card support, stylus support, and this, this most recent update cleaned up uh, their desktop mode. Mm-hmm. So like, tell me what other phone... And and of course, you know, if you add the case, you get dual display, dual display. It's a folding phone with two screens. Like, what other phone at that price point of a Galaxy A seventy one was really it's rocking all this stuff? We like this Nothing. is the last, the, the last mid ranger feature phone <laughs> to ever exist. You know, so it, I, I, I kind of want to give that like its own little bit of a eulogy now that I've been playing with Android eleven on it. Because mm-hmm. like, if you slept on Velvet and you were looking at that kind of mid-ranger 5g kind of device and you like you missed out on probably the most feature complete phone that has ever existed like if you could get me dex on an a72 i'd feel better about not getting another velvet but this is it like this is the only phone that has all that stuff so um it's that'll probably be out sometime next week of just like I'm not even going to do a fa- bunch of fancy B-roll. It's kind of just, again, it's just going to be what I just did here. Like, it has all this stuff. It has all How this stuff. How do people no, not I, I... like stuff? <laughs> <laughs> no, for the amount of features that the Velvet offered uh, in both variations of the Velvet, I feel like it was definitely something you, you especially now that we know we're not going to get a successor to that Velvet. Yeah. So it's going to be that one-off. It is a very unique experience that LG was able to provide. And I'm glad that, that they are still, like you said, uh, updating it or providing updates to it. Um, I did want to quickly comment on on Michael Peppertech's comment, which I did notice today. So there's some videos that are starting to show up on on the internet of the TCL 20 Pro, which seems still to hold true. I think I mentioned it on Twitter when when the announcement was being made that I think TCL posted it and it maybe removed it quickly. That the roadmap for the TCL 20 Pro, the U.S. market was last. We were not the prior the primary customer for this device. Yeah. Um, most manufacturers are kind of treating us. That they're way. they're changing, and I and I think Juan and I talked about this at one point. Uh, and you know, you're, he you kind of said that that's actually where the comment came from. He's like, TK, I don't really feel like they're focusing. This is we're not the primary business market. Uh, but the reason I even saw it because I, I forgot who was that that uh, liked the comment or commented on it. Um, in Canada, you buy a TCL twenty Pro, you get a TV with it, bro. <laughs> We need those type of specials here again, man. We don't have that. The UK has a whole bunch of those. Uh, but Canada, yeah, I mean, makes me want to drive up north a little bit, go to San Seattle, drive over to Canada. It's like, hey, give me my TCL 20 Pro. No, uh, it, it is definitely nice to start seeing it. I, I, I was very, I like the design. I obviously see, I saw some of the stuff. So it looks really good. Um, hopefully at some point we will start getting a chance to play with it and check it out. Um, I mean, the was, nice thing about that is like, I kind of feel like it's okay if, if we're not, oh, yeah, no, it, it it's a it's a it's a fun 
it's a fun smartphone, premium experience, premium look and experience with the 750 um, uh, processor on it with uh, obviously more of a down-to-earth mid-range of pricing, which I feel like is always the best deal. And, and TCL is one of the companies that can deliver. So uh, definitely kudos and very happy that we got a chance to check it out. Uh, well, not we, but it means, you know, got to see the video I, for it. So hopefully we'll see it at some point. <laughs> I wish. For sure. I wish I was able to see it. Um, well, I think that's about that's about it. I think, I think so. We're, we're all wrapped here. So. I, I think we're 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 about we're about that sweet spot there with having all of our friends hanging out with us. Um, so with that being said, I do want to say again, thank you very much to everybody uh, for Josh, Jeff, Aditya, um, Isa, uh, Juan Carlos, a velvet some velvet guy. <laughs> that sounds like it's a, really this sh things coming out of my mouth today just are not coming. They're not just being said correctly. Michael Peppertech. Um, everybody in the chat, of course, uh, Dinesh, uh, I think was it Vasikos was in there as well. Uh, thank you very much for hanging out with us. Thank you for taking time of your day at, or evening, of course, wherever you guys are, uh, and hanging out with us on the best of our week. Uh, we will try to be back next week when Juan has stopped fondling the velvet, uh, or maybe we'll, maybe that'll be the show part two. So, you know, hashtag two. adult <laughs> notifications. <laughs> I knew that was going to come back and haunt me. <laughs> I did not mean <laughs> it's even better that you didn't mean it that way. I did like, not. It's kind of Freudian that it. Came I didn't out even see. It, so I didn't even see it, and then I and I missed <laughs> Aditya's comment, and of course Steve oh, brings it back. Thank you very beautiful. much, everybody. Uh, <laughs> we will be back with some regular programming next week on another episode of the Best of Our Week. With some LG chill guy, some Juan Carlos Bagnell, some ramen guy, we're gonna have to we'll we'll have to put that. That's to the happening. Test. It's a thing. Uh, and um, of course, your host as well, myself, TK Bay. Uh, take care. Be safe, and we'll see you guys hopefully next week on another episode. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>